Hello and welcome to This Week in Campbell Football. With head coach Mike Mincher, I'm Chris A. Meyer, and as always, we're brought to you by our friends at Precision Ford. On the show today, we'll go into the time machine and take a look back at some old clips as we celebrate this, the end of the 10th season of This Week in Campbell Football. We'll also take a look at this past Saturday's game as Campbell took on Wake Forest. We'll have a recap, highlights, and analysis. Coach, this is the end of your four-game FBS fall season. Coming into it, you told me a lot of different things that you wanted to get accomplished. Did you get accomplished everything that you wanted out of this month? Chris, I think we did. Um, it, it's, it's been an unbelievable time. Um, just with COVID and, the, you know, um, the protocols and, and now you're really dealing with your athletic trainers on a different level. Um, other than injuries, and, and, and now you have to try to, you know, beat the virus. So you had two opponents going on, uh, well, I should say three opponents going on. So you have the virus, um, the other two opponents you always have, which is the other people that you play, and yourself, right? So so you have to be able to win those three battles. And, and I think that was a difference um, and made this even bigger than, than um, a normal year. On top of that, we, we just decided that one of them opponents was going to be all FBS opponents, right? And so you, you, you was going to be challenged in a way that you'd never been challenged before um, here at Campbell. And so how do you get prepared for that mentally? How do you go against that um, all the time? And so we wanted to accomplish how to prepare yourself for a battle that you knew you was outmatched every single week. How does a person go through that activity to be able to get themselves up to go play that game again? Not only that, let's shorten it up so we can make it even harder on ourselves. So then now it's nothing in this world, nothing. Okay, so when we could come in 21, it is nothing that our players can say that would be harder than what they just did in these four months. And that's what I wanted us to come out of with is a perspective of really what what hard stuff looks like, okay? You've went through the hardest thing you ever go through at Campbell University. So now you survived, you're okay, and we can move on to get ready to prepare for a 21 championship season. And that's really what's on our mind. We gotta win the conference championship. And, um, and we wanted to come out with that understanding that that's where we're going, that's what um, we're gonna prepare for, and we know what that looks like. And so, you know, all those things was really good from a football standpoint. Of course, from a recruiting standpoint, um, you begin to get your uh, footprint bigger. And people begin to understand now what Campbell University football program is all about. What Coach Mike Mentor been doing over there for the last eight years, right? And, and what type of program and culture that we have. People begin to see that. They know for a fact this team won't quit. Well, that's one of the first things that you want to have as a football coach with your team is that you play hard no matter what. And that's the type of stuff that we got out of this. The other thing is now people know us. So when we go into a high school coach office, they no longer think, are y'all D3, where y'all at? You know, no, 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 you know where we at and you know who we are. And so now you'll give us some type of players that can help us win championships. And, um, and so recruiting, of course, is going to be stepped up because of this. And so, you know, when you look at all those things and, and you know, we're going to get a new locker room. One of the, the things that we'll come back to um, in January when the kids come back on campus, they get a chance to see their new house, right? And, um, you know, where they live and, and now it's state of the art better than any any FCS school that's out there. It won't be, it, I mean, this, this locker room is gonna be unbelievable. And, um, and so, you know, when you look at that stuff, it just helps um, the momentum continue to go throughout the year. So, uh, Chris, that's what we wanted to try to get out of it. We got out of it, um, everything we wanted. Um, would have been great to get a win. We almost had that chance in the first one. And, uh, but now my guys know that we can play with anybody. And you certainly proved that 
the third time your Camels have been on national TV, <laughs> and it happened this Saturday. Let's take a look at the highlights. Campbell taking on their first ever Power 5 opponent in Wake Forest. This game was seen on the ACC network, and they were allowed to have fans at about 7%. You were ready. You told everybody to block it out. First drive of the game, gosh, your Camels look good. Here's wide receiver Jalen Kelsey, one of his six catches. Listen, um, Haas is doing a great job of reading where that safety is. He biting the uh, run game. We throw the ball. Great job by Haas reading his key. Williams keeping it alive with his legs, hitting running back Brian Barr. 36 yards. It's first and goal for your Camels. The Camels got it all the way to the two, but couldn't get in in a missed field goal. Listen, when we get down inside the 10-yard line, we have to be able to run the football in and get it going. Oh, great job by Slade. Coming from that safety spot, making a big play in the backfield. That's why he will have an opportunity to play on Sundays. Oh, Winston Salem native making that big sack. Your defense was solid early, but then coach, one of the things that you haven't done during this stretch, shooting yourself in the foot, back-to-back -back series, back-to-back -back turnovers on the first play. Hey, great job by Wake Forest. They did a great job of um, creating turnovers, see them grabbing the ball. And that's one of the things that our young team will have to learn is that when you play against big boys, their job is to take the ball away. And we got to take care of the football when you're doing that great catch by Austin Height coming across the middle, getting blasted, knowing he's going to get hit but holding on to it. That's what I'm talking about. On this drive down 14 nothing, your Camels come back. How about this? Grad school transfer from <laughs> UConn, Mason Donaldson. Watch the footwork. Halfway through the second quarter, Coach, your Camels are down just 14-7 to to an ACC team. Yeah, we, we was um, battling. I, I think our defense did a great job of keeping us in the ball game with them turnovers, and we was able to convert here um, going uh, forward there. And, and um, great throw and catch. Um, you know, just great execution, I thought, by the offense. And another transfer defensive end, Josh <laughs> Johnson with a sack. Your transfers really added a different kind of depth to this team. Yeah, they really did. And, and Josh is not even in football shape yet. So imagine what number one is going to look like at that time. Boy, third quarter now, offense on the move. Kelsey with another great catch. A great throw by Hodge Malik Williams right there, putting the ball on the back shoulder. And, of course, ESPN, number two. How about this? <laughs> Nearly 200,000 views. This was a number two play, the top play. Watch what your offensive linemen do. Of course, we saw this a couple years ago against Hampton. What a play. This captivated the nation. Yeah, it really did. So, you know, it's, it's like when you go on tour and you're always telling your same joke and then finally get on national TV <laughs> to tell that same joke and everybody loves it. <laughs> Because they've never seen it before, and that's what we did with that play right there. We just traveling the world doing that same play, and then we get on national TV, and everybody get to see it. How many views? It was, it was nearly 200,000 <laughs> as we are taping this morning. And now we're trending on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, I know after the game, your guys disappointed with the loss, but what did you tell your team? in the locker room after that game away from L Listen, I, what, what I wanted our guys to understand, because I felt like at the um, App State game in the second half, we kind of quit, okay? And this is the first time that we've done that. And so I challenged them and each individual and each player to step up and make sure that um, you don't quit. You give your all no matter what, and I thought they did that. And I wanted to let them know that that regardless of what the score was, you guys never quit. You kept fighting. Each man did. Um, and so we can live with that, okay? And then the second thing I told them, I said, look, let's get ready for the offseason. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to go three weeks of academics, and we're going to go straight uh, from that three weeks of straight academics, no football, no weightlifting, nothing, just straight academics so we can get that up to speed and where we need to be there. Um, and then we'll come back and for four weeks we'll do some strength and conditioning and kind of get us back in the football shape before we go home for Thanksgiving and probably for the end of the year as far as our semester is concerned. And so when we get back in January, we'll be ready to go. And, um, and so I told them that schedule. Then I told them, I said, listen, this is why we lift weights. This is why we run. This is why I tell you, you must go to sleep and you must eat right and you must do these things, right? So if you're a light guy, meaning you don't weigh a, a, a enough, 
your, your little butt need to be in there eating seven, eight times a day because now you see why. Okay, when you go against big football players, and football is about strength and, 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 and um, you know, how big you are, it's, no, it's not track. You, know, you, you don't want to be thin and run fast. Nobody wants that in football. You got to have some meat on your bones. You got to have some muscles that can push people out the way because when you play big football teams, and we will play big football teams next year, you got Liberty, okay, a FBS school, uh, right at, at the beginning of the year. Then you got JMU. Then you got Elon. And then you got your conference. I mean, listen, man, you, you got to be big. And I told them that is the number one thing. I don't want anybody coming here thinking that they, they can just um, get away with not lifting weights or get away without getting in shape or get away without eating right or sleeping right. You got to have all these things to be a great football player. So now you know I'm connecting the dots for you. So when you're in there with Striff, you're ready to go. You're getting bigger, you're getting stronger. Now you get more confidence. Now you get more poise. And, and that's what shows up later in the season. That's what shows up in the fourth quarter. Are you those type of guys? And um, I challenge them in that, in that area. Let's get our academics right first. And then let's get in football shape where we big and strong and we push people around all the time. I said, so when you guys were fresh in that first game, you pushed around the FBS opponent like they wasn't out there. I want to do that for 11 straight weeks. That's the, that's the goal and that's where we're going. In addition to getting stronger, you've laid out what your team is going to do during the fall. What does the spring hold for your camels when we turn the calendar? Yeah, so spring is going to be like every other spring um, um, that we've ever had. Uh, we'll come back in January and January will be all about strength and conditioning again. Uh, we'll, we'll, and then in February, the coaches start to get out there in the strength and conditioning um, part of it. And so we, now we do some mat drills and competition and, and trying to get people to understand what it means to compete against yourself and then compete against everybody every single day. And then once spring ball comes um, in, in um, the March and April, We'll, we'll, we'll go spring ball. So we'll have 15 practices over the 30 days that we can do it. And, um, and so we'll get better, okay? We'll get more reps. That's my, that's my goal is to get every single player on my football team 60 to 65 reps a day, okay? That's the only way we're going to get better as a program. And, um, you know, while everybody else is playing spring ball, we'll, we'll sit there and watch them and, and um, cheer, cheer on everybody, and then we'll see you guys in the fall uh, because we'll be ready and we'll be uh, ready to go. Well, Coach, uh, thank you. One last item of business to get to. This is the 10th season of This Week in Campbell Football. It doesn't seem like it. I've been doing it with Coach for eight years, two other years before that. It doesn't seem like it and still you, until you start looking at some of these old clips and then you say to yourself, oh, yeah, it has uh, definitely been that long. Here we go, September of... 2011, year four of the program, first year of the show, head coach Dale Steele and I, I was hired at this university at age 15, obviously. <laughs> I got on the uh, weight program here, and we go to September of 2013. Mike Minner joins the fun. Look at Coach Mint here. I'm not saying you don't look like you could still play now, but Coach, you look like you just came out of the Panthers locker room right here. Yeah, I was young, man. I was still, you know, in my 30s at the time, so... You know, over over time, man, you got a little gray coming in. I'm telling you, well, what does building a program in eight years do to you? It gives both of us gray hair, man. That's right. <laughs> we we both age a little bit, and and um, you know, and but you know, that's that's how it works, man. This is this is what life is all about: is being able to get these little gray hairs and that's right. and all that stuff. And so, you know, I I didn't shave on purpose because I want everybody to understand how hard this. <laughs> these five weeks were okay so you know just pray for me and all that good stuff <laughs> we will as always campbell football on the map year eight it was different but it was outstanding and your 10 of this week in campbell football is in the books for campbell head coach mike minner i'm chris haymeyer saying so long and we'll talk to you next year on this week in campbell football